Hello and welcome back to this video series on data and data modeling. In this video, I want to specifically talk about uh, an entity called associative entity. Um, so if we skip ahead here, uh, this is the sub schema that we saw in the previous video. We have three entities, property, amenity, and a property amend list. Um, as we mentioned in the previous video, property and amenity are both strong entities. Um, they can exist apart from any other entity, uh, but property amend list is a weak entity. And we're going to talk more about that uh, in a few here. But what I want to do here is I want to look at another view of this, more of a conceptual model that doesn't look at the attributes that entities, that these entities have associated with it, but more specifically talk about how do we actually come up with this property amend list and how do you actually identify if you need an associative entity? So let's go ahead and jump over to draw.io. So here's more of an abstract, more of a higher level conceptual ER diagram. Uh, so it doesn't necessarily diagram all the, the attributes, but rather it's just the relationship and the entities. So when you're first doing, going through the process of identifying the relationships, you're going to find that you're going to come across situations where you have a many to many relationship. So for instance, a property can have zero or more amenities and each amenity can be added to zero or more properties. Um, whenever you're presented with a situation where you have a many to many, uh, you want to break that up and add an associative entity. And the reason why is because let's say for instance, that we know that the, one of the principles is that uh, the many side receives the foreign key. So if we gave the foreign key of property to amenity, we would have to do the same thing for uh, giving the foreign key of amenity to property. But that wouldn't be sufficient in terms of allowing us to query uh, how many amenities that a, a property have. And so we need another entity that's going to actually hold uh, all of the different amenities that a property can have. So, for instance, if a property, let's say property one, uh, can have 17 different amenities, that table is going to hold the property ID and then all of the 17 amenities uh, for that property. Property two may only have three of the amenities. So we'll have three more records that our associative entity will add. So in this case here, whenever you see a many to many relationship, we need to break it up and add an associative entity. All right, so let's go ahead and I'm going to modify this diagram to add an associative entity uh, so that we can accurately reflect uh, the capturing of properties associated with amenities. All right, so I've modified uh, this conceptual ER diagram to include the associative entity prop amend list. Uh, and we added this associative entity because it breaks up the many to many relationship. So prop amend list is going to hold uh, the relationship between property and amenity. And so we give property uh, the foreign, we give property amend list the foreign key of prop ID, and we give property amend list the foreign key of uh, amenity or amen ID. Um, and then when we query, we will query um, the relationships that are held within this property amend list between the property and amenity. Now, again, just to re uh, reiterate, um, you would add this associative entity when there's a many to many relationship. Um, you wouldn't know on the onset to add an um, associative entity when you're doing uh, the business rules, um, but you will only discover this once you um, kind of create these relationships and find that, oh, I need another table that's going to hold the relationship. Um, prop amend list is a weak entity um, because it's uh, existence dependent upon amenity and property, but property and amenity are strong entities um, and that they exist apart from, they can exist apart from a property um, or a property amend list. So let's say, for instance, if we were to delete an amenity, we want to retroactively delete all of the various property amend lists, uh, all of the instances that it shows up on a property amend list and vice versa. If we were to delete a property, we want to retroactively, retroactively delete uh, all of the various properties that are on uh, the records that are show up as a property amend list. Hopefully that makes sense. It takes a little practice to, uh, to know when to add a, uh, a social entity but um, take a look at it, study it, um, and then we'll continue to um, do some more ER diagramming.
Stay tuned.